Hello everyone. Welcome to the Con 42 and the Ballerina Programming Language session. In this session, I am going to discuss in detail about Ballerina Programming Language, which is an open source programming language. It makes it very easy to write network-based applications for the cloud. Before going to the details, let me introduce myself. I am Anukuma Patirage, currently working as Director of Engineering at WSO2. WSO2 is a leading technology provider in the domains like integration, identity and access management, API management, and so on. Ballerina language is designed and implemented at WSO2, but currently is driven by the open source community as well. So first, let's look at what are the problems that we are facing today and where we are in terms of application development methodologies. If we look back the history a little bit, in many decades ago, we had systems like mainframe systems with legacy and centralized applications. And then gradually client server based distributed applications came into the picture. And after that, with the improvements in the internet and cloud based technologies, things has evolved a lot. And the way that we are writing programs and the way that we are designing things has evolved a lot. And then as developers, everyone has to adapt it to these changes. And if we look at how we approach the given problem or when we are developing solution for a given programming problem in the old days uh, we considered libraries as a unit of uh, lo logical components as that is the component that we are dealing with on the systems which are very much centralized but in nowadays it's unavoidable to have communication links between different systems. That means we have to talk to different endpoints and get some data and process them and send them over via to some other place. So that's a normal thing. And that means APIs are becoming the natural unit of execution, natural unit of uh, applications these days. So if we look at any kind of application, it usually has a front end as well as a backend. So backend means it can't, in, in nowadays applications, it doesn't work on its own. It has to talk to many different systems and it has to extract data, process data, uh, and then move it out from that system to some other place. That means it involves with many different network protocols, many different data formats. So it's unavoidable to deal with that complexity. And also, in today's world, there are so many languages, programming languages, which can handle great front end stuff as well as back end things. But although there are a lot of such languages to develop back end applications, it is not that easy when we talk about this problem because API integrations and this integration pro problem is complex due to the network interactions as well as different data types and also different communication paradigms. So that is the problem that we are trying to solve because we observed this problem or this hurdle for the developers for a long period of time. And if we look at the different technologies, integration products and technologies in one side, for example, ESPs, AI, uh, BPM, those things are not that much cloud native and those are, divide, give, those are giving proper or great functionalities but maybe not the ideal solution for the cloud. And on the other hand, we have general purpose programming languages and frameworks which are very much flexible but at the same time, they don't give the right set of abstractions to deal with the problem in this domain. So that is why we have introduced another language called Ballerina uh, to deal with those two different ends. It is providing the capabilities like any other integration product and technologies as well as it gives the flexibility of the programming language to deal with the complexities of the application development while providing the right set of abstractions. So if I talk a little bit about the history of the language, we started it in around 2016, but real idea came into the picture even before that, maybe around 2010, because in WSO2, we developed application for these domains and we observed the problems and we identified the uh, blockers that developers are facing. So then we thought 
a programming language would be the ideal thing to solve this problem so it's a general purpose programming language and if you look at the syntax you may feel, you may feel like it's familiar because we have c c plus plus family syntax in the language but at the same time it is specializing in the domain of integration and cloud based problems it provides a right set of abstra abstractions and various tools to make it easy for the developer and it's a also open source project which is driven by the open source community uh, we started in 2016 and it went through multiple iterations because we have uh, our own compiler and a platform around that to make it a complete thing and we released our first version in 2019 and the current major version is swan lake we released it in 2022 and right now we are developing uh, many features improvements over the swan lake as well as we are doing separate tracks to deal with other things like uh, different language specs or major additions to the spec as well as uh, native compilation to support native compilation for the ballerina language so that's the status of the language and let's look at what are the unique features of ballerina which makes it easy for the application developers. Uh, one main thing about programming is uh, there are many different programming language. It can be different kinds, uh, data oriented, object oriented, function oriented, and so on. In Ballerina, we consider it as a data oriented programming language because if we look at any programming uh, piece of program which works with many different uh, entities or endpoints, Usually what we share is data. In earlier days, we share code over the network, like in the RPC style of applications, but we no longer do that because of the security concerns and other things. Instead, we move data around. That means we need to have better ways of representing data in the network as well as the data in the memory. So in Ballerina, we designed in a way that we emphasize the plain data concepts that is independent of any code and pro protocol and the ways of processing especially how we can access data how we can uh, transform data so those things should be very easy and intuitive for the application developer and at the same time in ballerina we have different uh, support for different protocols and especially different data types for example json xml those are primitive types in the language like string int float like in other languages and also uh, ballerina language provide query like syntax if you check this code you can see sql like syntax here this is to process the data which are coming from the wire you can see the data received via the wire is assigned to memory in memory type and type that we defined in the application level uh, and then we process it using query like syntax it, it is very easy because we don't have to write complex logic to get a lot of filtering as well as processing uh, of the data and then we provide network oriented capabilities because network is the primary thing when we talk about integration and cloud native applications and type system is type type system is playing a key role here because we have to deal with the data on the wire as well as data in the application or memory level as well so we here you can see we are talking to endpoint and talking to endpoint is very easy in the language. The concepts of the client service are very much intuitive. And then the return type represent uh, the output from the network endpoint, usually JSON, XML type of uh, responses. And we can map it directly to a data structure defined in the application without doing explicit casting or any other processing. So that eliminates uh, very much boilerplate code if you want to convert things and it support well-known data formats and converting and accessing is very easy and other concept is service service means we uh, similar to retrieve data from other endpoints and services we have to serve data as well so ballerina service concept gives you a very much easy way to write services in it, it 
A service concept is a first class thing in the language and depending on the listener that we are binding to that, it acts as a different service type. If you can see here, we are attaching HTTP listener to this service. That means this will act as a HTTP service. So based on the uh, attached listener service will behave differently because in here you can see we are developing HTTP listener and you don't need to worry about internal network details or the things are handled by the listener and the service itself. What you have to do is implement the resource functions to match with the requirement of the service. So in HTTP world, it's usually get post, delete, those kind of operations. And we can write resource functions for these things. You can see get here, post here, those goes very close with the HTTP world. And what you have to mainly focus on the business logic, not anything else uh, about the network or the underlying complexities. And it returns the data types in the language itself or the data types that you have defined. And then the listener will handle it internally when it's returning to convert it to the proper format, the default formats and so on. So here also we support two different interface styles. You know, uh, in RPC style, we usually have remote methods. In that case, in, within the service, you have to define remote methods and RESTful style like HTTP, GraphQL, we have to write resource functions. So what the developer has to do it is uh, focus on the business logic because the right level of abstraction is provided by the language to deal with the complexity of developing the services and the boundaries and how we handle things. And also concurrency is playing a key role here. In network applications, concurrency is kind of an unavoidable thing. And we provide different um, concepts and support even during compile time to guarantee the compile time safety as well as runtime concurrency, concurrency safetyness. And similar to the services, clients are also very much important. Clients means we need to invoke other endpoints of different types of protocols. So language provides support for uh, different clients and depending on the client, client is a language concept and depending on from which protocol that you are, depending on which protocol that you are using to access the client, we can define different type of clients. It can be gRPC, WebSocket, GraphQL, and many more different protocols. So creating a client is easy. You can provide additional parameters if needed, and also invoking the functionalities or, invoke, or get the details or get the response out of it also very easy. The syntax for calling or invoking an endpoint is like this. And also you can bind data very easily, uh, the response data. So then that means with all these things, developers can focus on real business logic and they can then take more time to focus on that. And another concept is when we think about enterprise application, concurrency and reliability is very much important because we have to always make sure our applications are behaving in a reliable way. And also in the integration world, concurrency is mandatory thing. So like any other language, we provide uh, concurrency handling constructs. We have asynchronous function calls, workers, and strand concepts, uh, which provides a logical thread of control and all, all these things are there. At the same time, Ballerina guarantees or provides many mechanisms to ensure the concurrency safetyness during the compile time itself by means of different uh, like mutability concepts. So those things are a little bit complex and difficult to handle in a small session like this, but uh, Ballerina tries to be proactive when giving the warnings and other errors related to concurrency problem without waiting till the runtime. And also reliability. That means usually, for example, transactions plays a huge role in enterprise applications. We need to guarantee uh, the atomic operations. And in Ballerina, transaction is a first class thing and it's a syntax, uh, syntax by the syntax itself, it defines the transaction boundaries 
and you can write your business logic within this syntax block and then it guarantees the atomic operation of the execution of the internal log internal code so likewise it tries to address the problem of the integration problems that integration developers are facing and there are many more such concepts like uh, http resiliency um, protocols and how we handle things like that and another important thing is usually when we design an application uh, we write or we draw diagrams to explain things and to understand things and uh, to visualize things properly but in ballerina we don't have to do it explicitly because it provides different level of diagrams to make it easy for the developers so every piece of program that you write there's an equivalent diagram which is automatically generated so this is the program in the left side and in the right side you can see the diagram which is automatically generated and also the important thing is uh, we maintain the parity between the code and the diagram that means if you change something in the code it appears automatically in the diagram and if you change something in the diagram diagram is editable you can see these plus points where you can add anything that you can do in the code side using the diagram and it will generate the code if you add things on the diagram side and when you look at the code sometimes you can't identify a uh, high level view what are the interactions which is very important in uh, integration kind of application so here you can see we are in interacting with two different endpoints uh, one is github another one is google sheets and then we are getting responses and do some processing and this is the diagram generated in the vs code plugin you can install the vs code plugin uh, from the vs code marketplace and this gives the diagram view automatically so that's very much helpful when you are talking to some other stakeholders or if you are discussing among the developers about the application or if you are trying to understand the application overall big picture so this is a like a sequence diagram where we have uh, a horizontal vertical lines which represent each thread of execution as well as different endpoints and these horizontal lines represent the interactions between those different endpoints and the actors and those are the not only diagramming features that we have in the app uh, ballerina uh, we provide different level of diagram capabilities one thing is uh, the sequence diagram and there are so many other things uh, including architecture diagram as well if you are developing a complex application which involves multiple uh, components or services or multiple modules then it gives that view as well like a uh, high level view on how different components are interacting with each other as well what are the dependencies and how they are in working with in working different application and another thing is the data mapping feature so usually when we deal with data coming over the wire we have to process them and especially we have to convert them into different formats or different data types so as you can see here language provides the capabilities to uh, map the, in, in a very convenient way because if you are if you have to write all the logic of mapping in hand it's very difficult task if we have large payloads but in this view you can easily drag and drop or connect the different fields from uh, source type to the target type and also in between you can type whatever the custom logic in mapping sometimes you may have to do some intermediate step or calculation before mapping uh, then ballerina support that as well so along with all these diagram capabilities it's very easy to write programs even if you doesn't know much about the language and then another feature is built-in observability every ballerina program is automatically observable by any open telemetry tool and it has three main areas like matrix tracing and login and you can connect to uh, external systems like prometheus grafana Jaeger, or any other login platforms uh, to visualize or to observe the behaviors in the runtime so that capability is built into the language it's just a matter of enabling or disabling it and it gives the support 
to connect with these tools. And another important thing when it comes to the cloud is the how we how easy it is to develop or bring your code in or deploy your code in the cloud. Usually the practice is developers are developing it and it hand over the relevant artifacts to the deployment engineers and then do all the uh, artifact generations to the cloud environment and the deployment environments and then do the deployment. But in Ballerina, since it's focused on the cloud deployment most of the time, we provide easy ways to deploy generate the deployment artifacts as well. Here you can see bell build command. This is a simple hello world pro program or service written in Ballerina. In the bell build command, we can provide additional argument called cloud and with the parameters of the environment that you want to deploy. For example, here, uh, this example, it's Kubernetes. It can be Docker, things like that. And when you provide that, it builds or it generates the artifacts uh, that you need to have to deployment as well. Uh, for example, Docker files as well as the Kubernetes artifacts, including uh, service deployment and other YAML files. So then when you do that, uh, what it does is it extracts some of the parameters and other things from the code itself. And also you can config things. Sometimes you don't, uh, you, you might need to uh, improve the behaviors by providing more memory and other things. You can provide those in config.toml to change the generated artifact values. And then based on all these things, it will generate the cloud artifacts where you can customize and deploy if you need. So that is about making it easy for the cloud. And that is not only about that because it, since it's a full platform, it has support for many cloud uh, connectors and uh, cloud deployment capabilities and uh, different ways to connect different cloud providers, uh, things like that. So one other important thing is right now Ballerina is written in Java. That means uh, compiler is written in Java and it generates JVM bytecode. And also it provides Java interoperability because of that. So that means if you have a piece of code written in Java and if you want to invoke it using a Ballerina code, you can easily use the Java interoperability capabilities so that you can link that Java code into the Ballerina code. And also, although it's a, uh, it's written in Java and generate JVM bytecode, the semantics of the language were carefully designed to be independent of the Java and JVM because our target is to create another implementation uh, which generates a native bytecode. That work is currently in progress. That's what we call in Valerina. And also recently we introduced the native flag, which generates a GraalVM native executables uh, when building the Valerina project. So Valerina is designed carefully not to have tight coupling with the Java or JVM. Uh, in future, uh, we will provide more native kind of uh, artifacts as well. And also, Ballerina is not just a language. It offers a full platform, uh, especially the VS Code plugin, uh, which provides all the capabilities that I have mentioned, including source and graphical editing, debugging, and uh, diagram generation uh, for like architectural view and other things. And it provides the ca capabilities that any other VS Code plugin provides for any other language, but at the same time with the diagram aspects and um, deployment aspects, it provides some additional features as well. And also uh, generating or working with the schemas like OpenAPI, GraphQL, gRPC, those are very much easy. And to generate the API documentation, we have commands and also test framework is similar to most of the language just but with service mocking and other stuff too and Belna, Belna contains standard library and extended library which provides support for many different uh, protocols like http grpc web sub web socket uh, as first class things and also we have extended library with a lot of connectors for different uh, apis as well as SaaS applications so Belna Central is a centralized place so where you can host things, 
uh, if you want to share your code with other developers so that if others can benefit from your code you can package it and share it using ballerina central our module sharing platform which is free to use for anyone and then uh, for other features runtime features especially like observability and devops capabilities ballerina language provide better features also wso2 is providing another offering which we call choreo a SaaS application development platform which makes it really easy to develop deploy manage and observe the applications in the cloud so it's not directly related to ballerina but at the same time it will give you more features and more capabilities if you combine ballerina and choreo together because it addresses the problems of the entire application development life cycle so in today's session i covered uh, in detail about features of the language but it is somewhat um, high level list because uh, in language there are so many capabilities that you can try out and so my request is try the language and try to use it in your applications and share your feedback with us we have a community around us open source development community in various platform including uh, discord stack overflow twitter github and so on so feel free to join with us if you're willing to contribute to the language as a developer as well as if you want to use it in your applications so that's about some high level overview about the ballerina programming language thank you very much for joining today's session and hope you will enjoy the rest of the sessions as well